I'm like a middle-aged mom with her fascination in true crime documentaries over here with my fascination with being a sellout. Now, as I observe the punk rock world, and as I have for like 30 years now, the whole concept of being a sellout has always been around. The whole concept of being a poser has always been around. And mostly I put those concepts to the back burner because I just want to enjoy what I enjoy. And I want people to like what they want to like, okay? But over the last couple weeks, this whole concept of, of like what is a sellout is like entering my mind, okay? Now a lot of people define being a sellout as being an independent band and claiming that you're never going to sell out and then signing to a major record label. But I don't necessarily think that that's selling out. As I've outlined in my previous videos, I think selling yourself out is the true act of selling out. But to explore the concept of selling out, I'm going through the story of all these bands about when they were putting out these independent DIY records, how they blew up, and when they signed, and what the audience did in response to them signing. Some bands blow up, other bands get blown up. In the two videos that I did so far in the series, we saw both ends of the spectrum, okay? We went all the way to the positive side with Green Day, and all the way to the negative side with Jawbreaker. But to be fair, we didn't go all the way to the end of the negative side of the spectrum because to outline how crazy people thought about this stuff back then, I wanted to talk about the time Jello Biafra got jumped at Gilman. Now, Gilman has like this reputation of being the punk rock mecca with a strict DIY ethos. If you sign to a major record label, you're not really allowed to come through anymore. But after the Dead Kennedys did the whole act of selling out, Jello Biafra, the former frontman of the band, had the audacity to come through the door again. Now, I'm being facetious, okay? I think that Jello Biafra should have been able to come in and enjoy a concert, okay? Should have been able to come in and see a show or two. Now, I understand that Gilman wants to apply the rules the same to everybody, but he's not playing, he's just there to enjoy a show. And in 1994, Jello Biafra was enjoying a show at the Holy Grounds Gilman Street, okay? Where he got jumped and beaten up. All for being a sellout rock star. Now, this story got so publicized that even Rolling Stone made an article about this. Now, this ties into all the recent videos that I've been doing, okay? I've been talking about sellouts, and I've been talking about Rolling Stone, and this is the time Rolling Stone talked about a sellout, so I thought that that was applicable to the channel right now. And it also illustrates how passionate the punk rock fans were about being a sellout back then. It doesn't really matter so much in 2023 anymore, which makes me think, do these guys feel all super silly for the way that they acted back then? Not exactly sure but I couldn't find the actual archive of this article, but someone did like a transcription over here, and I'm just gonna go ahead and trust that it's accurately transcribed over here, but I'm just gonna read a couple passages here, because this was written by Michael Goldberg for Rolling Stone, okay, in 1994, and it says, Veteran punk rocker and spoken word artist Jello Biafra was attacked and seriously injured by a group of young men at Gilman Street at Berkeley, California Punk Club on May 7th, 1994. One of Biafra's legs was broken and sustained extensive damage to the ligaments of one knee as well as a superficial head wound. Berkeley police are currently investigating the incident, but there have not been any arrests. It may well have destroyed the chances of performing music live the way I want to, said Biafra, who is recuperating at a San Francisco home. If I can't get the knee to come back, I just don't want to stand out there and bore everyone to death. Biafra, the former leader of the Dead Kennedys, was watching a show by the fixtures when a court According to Biafra, a slam dancer crashed through the crowd, landing on Biafra's leg and breaking it. So it doesn't really seem like it was a targeted attack at first, but the leg was broken, okay, during this. I asked him for an ID so I could deal with it and leave the cops out of it, said Biafra. He laughed. According to Biafra, the slam dancer, whose nickname is Cretan, <laughs> went on to say, well, you're such a rich rock star, you can deal with it yourself. So you can see how an argument was brewing here. And an argument ensued. By Biafra's account, Cretan then pushed him to the floor and all of his friends, five or six thugs, jumped on me, kicked me in the head from both sides. And as they were kicking me, they were yelling, sell out Rockstar, kick him. So the way that this looks to me, it didn't seem like they were like, hey, there's a sellout over there, let's go kick his ass. It's after the argument ensued, Cretan was like, I'm gonna go after the low hanging fruit and just call this guy a, a sellout or whatever. And he went on to handle it about as well as a guy named Cretan would. 
or a cretin if you're British. Not very mature and not really the best way to handle it. You, you broke the guy's leg, you know, and it could have been by accident, but just like a quick, I'm sorry, dog, would <laughs> have went a long way, no? <laughs> you don't even really need to say sorry. You're out there moshing. All you need to do is like help the guy up, maybe get him to a seat and sit him down, get him a cup of water, maybe. The, he just broke his leg. Let's get back to this article, round this thing out. Because of the injuries, Biafra was forced to cancel an upcoming spoken word tour of Western Canada. He planned to tape his shows for a spoken word album that was to be his next release on Alternative Tentacles, the punk label he owns. And not to, not to brag or flex or whatever, but that, yeah, they follow me on Instagram, no big deal. But let's just say I don't think that this would happen to this degree today, involving the generation of today anyway. Maybe if you go into an old head New York hardcore scene and you're not quite New York hardcore enough, maybe you're just not throwing around that n-word as casually as they like. So maybe those guys might beat you up if you like sell out or whatever. But let's just say nobody is beating up Turnstile, nobody's gonna be beating up Scowl or Drain. Everybody is celebrating the fact that more people are listening to punk rock and hardcore. And if that means infusing with more melodic elements, okay, if that means doing a little bit more accessible stuff to spread the message of the scene or whatever, I can kind of get behind that. But sometimes those efforts go in vain and it's fun to point and laugh at them and that's why this channel exists okay that was just a quick little video on the seriousness of selling out i'm going to do a little bit more research and i'm going to come back at you with another video about how a band sold out the next band um is going to be i'm going to leave that a surprise okay see you later